I'm making this video to discuss uh, my observations in working in corporate America and in working in the business world in general regarding black men. Um, as a black man, I've worked several jobs um, over the last 20 years before I started my own business. And I noticed this pattern in, in business with, with um, when it comes to black men. Um, oftentimes people often look at a black man like myself and they'll say, you're an angry black man or you're sort of hostile. Like um, one job I had, I was on the phone and I was using the exact same voice I'm using right now. And people were like, uh, he sounds like a hostile black man or he's an angry black man. And I always found that to be odd. I mean, I'm just talking to you in my regular voice. But they was always perceived as some sort of anger issue or something like that. And then I often thought it was me until I started listening to other YouTube videos from other professional black men like Dan Freeman and the Iceman and, and David Carroll. Well, after I read David Carroll's blog, and then I started to see that this is a pattern with any, with many educated professional black men that we're often perceived in a negative fashion when we're in the job market. Um, uh, sometimes they call us aloof or distant and that they can't approach us. People say that he just seems so distant and stuff. like. I used to get that a lot at jobs. And you're just being you. You're just trying to do your job. You're trying to mind your business. But it's considered that there's something wrong with you because you want to just mind your business. And a lot of times, black men, we really don't want to, we really have to keep our distance because people are prone to do things to try to get you fired from a job. And a lot of times people just, they, mis they misinterpret a black man's body language, a black man, the way a black man speaks, um, the way black man, black man has to really, he has to really be on guard. And I remember one job I had about five years ago, it, uh, just being on guard, it just made me really anxious, made me really nervous. And because anything you say or do will be used against you. And I just find it's it's like when it's like, but then again, you are behind enemy lines, so that's part of it. But you really, everything you do is like judged harshly or judged severely when you're a black man in the job market, and you're, it's like. Everybody thinks that you're an angry black man, and it's like there's nothing angry. You can just sit be sitting there with a regular face, like the one I have right now, and it's called. He looks so angry. He looks so bitter. And it's like you're not angry. You're concentrating. I mean, I'll be at a computer terminal, sitting up there concentrating, and then people are like you're angry. And then there are some people like, why are you so antisocial? Why are you so quiet? I'm like, I'm trying to get work done, and. Then the flip side of it is, you get the other side, because I got this at another job, was you're not doing anything. And a lot of people, they like to say that black men on a job are lazy, and we really aren't lazy. Sometimes there are down periods, and then it's like the insecurities of non-black people really, when there's a down period and there's black male employees sitting there, they really, they try to give you busy work just to keep you busy, just, to, just so they can make it look like you're doing something, so they can look like it's productive. But really, that's their that's that's the non-black person's insecurity about black men because they've heard all these false stereotypes about black men being lazy, black men being shiftless, and they make a lot of judgments about African American men that we're 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 some of the most productive workers. I mean, at a lot of the jobs I had, people said that I did very good work, but the whole thing is they these social insecurities from people really gave we really led to a lot of problems on a lot of jobs that I had. And when it comes to black men, we run into a lot of obstacles and when we, when we do get those jobs. And that's what makes it hard for us to really keep employment. But this is, that's, the, that's the main reason why I started my own business. And I really think other black men should need to start their own business because you just run into all these obstacles. People calling you hostile, people calling you angry, people calling you lazy. And you're not lazy at all. I mean, sometimes you do get frustrated. I mean, everybody gets frustrated with a job. Everybody gets frustrated with a job environment. And it's like they, you're taught that black people, men are not allowed to express their emotions or express their feelings or they just have to be like robots with a skin and grin facial expression. And when you have that skin and grin facial expression, 
And guys like that, nobody takes them seriously. And, I mean, you're a professional. You want to compete. You want to present yourself in a professional manner. You don't want to be seen as the skinning and grinning, buck dancing minstrel, but it seems like that's the type of black man many people are comfortable with. They call him non-threatening, but he really is it's like two sides of the coin, the thug and the non-threatening guy. And they're both really the same guy. They're neither, they're neither are a threat to the business world. But the black man who comes in, he's really serious, he's competitive, and he, he really wants to work. I mean, I've gotten that at a lot of jobs. It's like, you really want to be competitive, um, and people are like, this guy is lazy, or they want to project things onto you. Really, I find a lot of managers like to project their own feel, project their own things, because a lot of them are mediocre. And I think some of them are afraid that a black man's going to take their job, or a black man's going to show them that their ideas, because really, long term, I think, they're afraid that their ideas of black men, when they see hardworking professional men like myself, they're going to get shattered. All those ideas and concepts they had about African American men being lazy, being um, Eric, being lazy, unprofessional, and sloppy, when they start seeing us produce quality work, it scares them. It makes them upset. And that means they can't live in their fantasy world where, you know, the black man is a lazy man, black man is an incompetent man, and he, he needs some supervision, he needs guidance, he can really navigate this, this, this business structure, and he can manage business procedures. He can manage business procedures. That, that really scares a lot of non-black people because that means that they're going to have to get up out of their comfort zone because a lot of people what I learned in, in America and especially after working in the American job market a lot of people want to be comfortable they don't really want to exert any effort or get creative or get out of the box what they want to do is they want to be safe they want to be secure and when they see Af black men coming into a job market I mean everybody from white males Hispanic males Asian males even black women they have their comfort zone, they're in their comfortable spot, and they, when they see a black man really coming in, ready to compete, really, really focused and intense, and really dedicated to his work and his craft, I really feel that it really scares the living crap out of them, because they know they're going to get, may, may possibly get shown up, and they're going to, and they're going to be shown for the mediocre workers that they are. Because a lot of times, a lot of black men are really good, they're really, really, when they're at the top of their game and the top of their craft, a lot of brothers are really competitive. They're going to bring, they're going to take it to the next level. And I think that's what, that's what a lot of people, they get scared of in the job market, that they're going to get shown up, that they're going to get their jobs taken from them. And really, I think that if you, once you get good at it, because to, to me, a job is just a stepping stone to getting your own business. And... Nobody really, I'm not looking, for, when I go to a job, I'm not looking really to stay anywhere because I know how the job market is today. I worked job readiness 13 years ago, and I've studied the job market, and most of these jobs are not going, I know that they're, I'm not trying to stay anywhere because basically, one, I'm working against myself by working for somebody else because I'm giving them my best ideas, and two, I know these jobs, they're, they're engineered to fail, and most jobs today, I mean... They're only engineered the last two years. Twenty years ago, they were only engineered the last five years. Um, the days of the trying to get the gold watch, staying at one company for the rest of your life for 40 years, that's over with. So if you're in a job market, you really, or if you're looking for work, you really need to be working on building your skills up so that you can start your own business. That's what I, that's what I do. That's what I've done. Um, really, that's what I really, that's what I think everybody else should do. You really just want to stay there long enough, use these jobs as a stepping stone. Black men, especially black men, we really have to start using these jobs as stepping stones. We don't see them as a career or source of in, as a source of income, but as a way of developing the skills so that we can develop revenue streams. Because you're black men, you have to understand you're not wanted in the job market, but you have to way up, find a way of making a living. And the best way to make a living is building up your skills and building up your reputation. Because it really wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're an angry... If, you can't be called an angry black man if you have your own business and you do business with your own people. 
because when you do business with your own people, it, it really help it really helps you out, and that's why I, I say that you know these are my, my observations about working in the job market and and being a black man in the job market. You're just not you feel like you're not welcome. I mean, there were several jobs I worked at where you just felt like you weren't welcome. I mean, you just felt like you weren't wanted. I mean, I remember the job I had five years ago. I was in a performance evaluation, and this professor, he comes, and we're doing performance evaluation. The guy literally says to my face, you know, I'm looking for someone with a sales and customer service background. Now, I felt really offended by that because here I am, I have the job, and you're talking about you're looking for somebody else. I mean, if we were, if he was, it was, just, it was utterly disrespectful, and it was just an insult just for you to say, I'm looking for somebody else. I'm here, I'm doing the job, everybody's saying I'm doing a good job at that. I mean, I was literally training people and getting stuff done. But, uh, the library I was working at was running like a top, but he says he's looking for somebody with a sales and customer service background. Basically, what he was trying to do was minimize my skills and say that I didn't have the skills of a guy with a, with, who, because sales and customer service, really, those guys are really $8 an hour and no skills. It was really an insult because as a writer, that's just part of my base. As a writer and a publisher, sales and customer service was basically part of my background. That was, that was, that was just like one of the basic skills I had. It was really like a slap in the face. And you run into a lot of that in management. They, they try to minimize black men's skills. And they try to do all sorts of things to make black men feel not welcome. Um, there, there are other things people, they do to black men, like, um, you know, not introducing you to managers and stuff like that. I've run into that, too, where they just don't introduce you to certain managers and certain people. And it's like saying that you're not gonna you're not gonna have a place here in this business when they don't introduce you to certain people, um, and that happened to me at the last job I had, and I I, I found I, I didn't notice these things until I started listening to other videos here on YouTube like Dan Freeman's, um, the threatening black man, that was what that was a brilliant video, and you you run into these things they don't introduce you to people. Um, they minimize your work, and then they say you're an angry black man, and you're not an angry black man. And uh, brothers, you're not angry. I mean, you're serious and studious, but people just don't value your work. And really, seriously, this is this is the reason why you need to get your why black men really need to get their own businesses and get things going for themselves because work is not going to get valued. I mean, when you're a black man in the workplace, you're pretty much on your own and you have to really you really not it's not a nice it's not a great place to be but everybody's talking about you have an attitude and you really like I ran into that too and you don't have an and a lot of times black men like myself don't have attitudes but we'll be perceived as having an attitude sometimes you're just frustrated from being in such a hostile work environment that it has an effect on you and really you're just reacting you're trying to I mean after years of holding it sometimes a year or two of holding it in or a couple of months of holding it in, you're just trying to, you're just, you wind up, unfortunately, reacting to the hostile environment you're given in, you're presented in, where you're being, literally being attacked every day. And a lot of times, black men, when we go into work, we get attacked every day. I mean, we get no support from managers. We get no support from coworkers. I mean, even the receptionists will lose your, lose your messages and stuff. I mean, all sorts of passive-aggressive stuff to make you not feel welcome there and not feel part of the team. Well, meanwhile, a non-black person walks in, they're doing everything for them. They're setting up their email account. They're helping them out. Um, they're introducing you to core players on, on, on the team. And meanwhile, you've got other people, when you're a black man, you're being undermined. People are losing your reports. They'll tell you to give, like I remember one job I had um, with AmeriCorps, the guy, he told me to give him a um, project I was working on. I gave him the project, he asked for it again, I'm like, I gave it to you once, he lost it again, it's like, you have to keep double checking, and triple checking, like, people will set up meetings with you, and then they won't show up, and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's really hard for a black man in the job market, um, that's all I have to say, you can comment, rate, and subscribe.